thought about the way to describe what I'm going to do today, and I want to make it very clear on the very front end of this. This is not a one size fits all timber stand improvement plan. This is what my objective is on my property with what I have to work with as far as the species in my, in my timber. Um, if you can see over my shoulder, all those gold leaves that are still hanging on, and while all the other trees in the timber uh, pretty much have dropped back in October and November, these beech trees, uh, Fagus grandifolia, believe it or not, American beech, they hold until the spring buds start to open and they get pushed off. So one of the cool things about the beech tree is that it does hold its leaves and create some sense of cover. But if you go back to your biology days, back in high school, you can probably recall the discussion about shade tolerant and intolerant species. A beech maple timber or, or forest is a fully mature forest. And the reason that is, is beech and maple trees are shade tolerant, whereas oak and hickory, which is a younger class forest, are not. They, they require a lot of sun. So if you let a tent, if you let your property just go and never touch and manage it in any fashion, the beech trees and the maple trees will eventually take over. And you can kind of tell by looking in there, there's just, as far as the eye can see, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of young, aspiring young beech trees coming up in my timber. Now, here's where it's gonna get a little bit dicey, and I'm sure because it's such a controversial topic, is hinge cutting has been really popular the last five to 10 years. And some foresters say they'll disagree with the, with the prospect of uh, going in and, and hinge cutting over young trees. Even non-target species are saying you're better off just removing the tree altogether or cutting it and felling it, or even girdling it, which we're gonna do some of that today. My thoughts on my property, are num my number one objective here is wildlife. Number two is timber value for in long-term investment, return on investment. Number three is aesthetics. So the looks of the woods aren't as important to me as those other two um, criteria. So number one is wildlife. Why not remove that tree, but at the same time in the process, keep it alive at eye level to be able to provide not only uh, visual barriers for just the deer to feel more secure, but also sound and sight and bedding and just just plain cover in the timber the tree will stay alive there's plenty of information out there on on hinge cutting so this is not a tutorial today on how to do it it's what i'm going to do on my property the several practices that i plan and number one is pretty much a full a full blown war on beech trees some beach <laughs> Effective way to kill a tree and leave it standing without worrying about the danger of falling and dropping this thing. And also, the process of a, of a tree that's standing and dying, it takes a long, a long time for it to eventually shed its limbs and lose, the, lose all its branches before the, the main pole fall, fi, excuse me, finally falls over, which um, just gives you less mess to have to worry about if it's near a, a road or a, 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 you know, a building site, something like that. But this is called girdling, ringing. Essentially what I've done here is just cut an inch or, or two into the bark and what's called the cambium layer of the tree. There's two processes of tissue inside the tree here. Xylem takes uh, xylem up and flow them down. Xylem takes water and, and up to the top and then photosynthesis. Phloem takes the nutrients and energy down to the roots to keep the tree alive. So. We've cut through that layer inside the bark of the tree and eff effectively this, this tree is now, it's gonna die. Um, the reason I did it twice is it's probably recommended by a lot of, the, of your forestry, uh, foresters and consultants, but I've been on a lot of properties where I've seen a single ring around a tree and the tree actually healed over, scarred over and continue to survive. So some of these species are pretty tough but usually by double ringing it like that a couple inches apart, it's almost guaranteed that's going to be an effective kill.
All right, we're into day two of the TSI hinge cutting process. And I thought I'd take a second to show you kind of what we're doing, what it looks like before we walk through a ridge area and what it looks like after we're done. The thing I didn't mention yesterday is, again, very specific to my property in this, actually this part of the state of Indiana. Um, I've got friends that are west of Springfield, Illinois that do not even have beech trees on the property at all. I, I just find that hard to believe. Uh, if you want some, you can come get them, but no, really, uh, if, if there's something about the soils and, and the climate and the zone there that they don't grow. But I am just absolutely overrun with them. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about over my shoulder. We're going to walk out in here. It, there's literally a tree every five feet in here, and the, the young beech have just made a crown, a closed canopy at mid-story. So not only are you know, the sunlight's up high getting restricted, but now I've got a mid-story canopy, mid canopy that's further choking out sunlight to the ground and there's nothing but dead leaves in here. Let's, let's go look at it. As far as your eye can see in here, now one thing it is helping with is visual screening, but this is absolutely barren ground underneath these trees and, and you can just see the just the sheer number of these little beech sap saplings coming up. Contrast that to downslope where the trees, the beech trees that are in there are a lot more mature. So now I have visual 200 yards through the woods that we can see so we're kind of doing a, a double benefiting process here by eliminating these younger trees and i'll show you what i'm talking about on the area that we just got done over here all right so this is the uh, ridge that we just got done and we're working that direction towards where i just showed you but now remember Aesthetics are not my priority, they're way down the list. So this may look really ugly to some of you, but this is absolutely beautiful for screening visual cover. Um, these are all beech trees that we've ringed and, and hinged. And you can see, well, you're lucky if you can see in there beyond 20 yards. Whereas before I could see three ridges over in here. And remembering now, the sunlight that I'm allowing, and look in this little point here above my pond, there's beautiful white oaks in there that are now just freed up and unrestricted, and, and we've got just a huge pocket of brush that you can't see 20 yards into. That sun in there now, which you see wasn't there before, so that's going to result in a big flush of new growth this season. So these trees are going to stay alive for quite a few years and green up and send more growth out. They hold those leaves like you see into the fall, so I, I just I can't find a negative um, you know, aspect of why, why wouldn't I do this unless you just absolutely love beech trees. Um, but this is good stuff. We're doing some major changes in a very short order here. Um, that's one of the cool things about timber management is it doesn't take long to get a real quick result. Sacred. 